Bang, bang. Let's see. Is it up? Do you see it yet? There it is. Think okay, I'm refreshing your wall. Let's refresh. There we go. Did it come up yet? Oh, it's got to be something because I see something going on. There we go. All right. Just popped up. Just popped up. All right. I'm going to do some sharing here to our groups. Welcome, everyone. That's tuning in for the first non Sam episode. <laughs> we'll miss him. We miss Sam. Oh, yeah, there it is. All right, well, a couple more shares here. Gotta do all those. I gotta do all the work now. There's gotta be a better way yes, to do sir. this. Yep, it's called a VA. Yeah. <laughs> or an intern. Yeah, right. Or a teenager. Do you have any teenagers yet? Yeah, they don't want to know me. <laughs> all right, let me get one more share going here, and then we will go live with this. All right. There we go. There's Benny. There's Nicole. All right. The fan club is here. And we are getting going. All right. So this is the first episode that we're changing it up a little bit. Uh, now that Sam's gone, we had to give it a new look. So the new look is Fire Starts Fire because um, we went from Get Some Fire Live, which... Uh, Serve this purpose, but now uh, every morning when I say my message of the day, uh, I say fire starts fire, and I figured, you know what? Let's just call, just call this podcast that too, because uh, that's what it's all about. We uh, we hear each other's stories, and the fire in each other um, inspires each other to uh, build a fire in ourselves, and that fire keeps spreading amongst our group and amongst each other. And we keep encouraging each other, and so that's what it's all about. So um, tonight we have on. The wonderful Sonia Ray. Um, she has a hell of a story, and uh, she's kick-ass, and she's a definition of what FYE, forget your excuses, looks like. We're going to keep a little G-rated as much as possible. Oh, and thanks for the warning. Cause for I... the warning, yeah. <laughs> We're not afraid to curse, but I'd rather not if we don't have to. Uh, I don't like to... Well, fudge your excuses. Yeah, fudge your excuses, <laughs> you know. We'll keep a little G. We'll keep a little G. Uh, especially after that episode with Corey, I got to tone it down a little. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. So well, you didn't get banned, so that's a good thing. You didn't get banned, yeah. So that's good, yeah. So, so Sonia has an amazing story. Um, there's a lot involved, but the biggest thing that stands out to me is that um, a couple of years ago, you were basically in a wheelchair, um, debilitating pain, and you just finished 75 hard. I mean, that is just like wow like i barely made 75 hard and i wasn't in a wheelchair so i mean just coming out of a wheelchair and doing 75 hard is really just insane so we'll get into I that had a few, i had a few years just, just but still i mean you know a few years, a few years but still out. i mean that's that's you know when you're coming from a at a point in your life when you're in a wheelchair uh to the point where you finish 75 hard two workouts a day i mean that that's just really impressive and that's on top of that, her, her business skills and everything else that's going on in life, we'll dig into that. But that's just something that really stands out in my head is, you know, when uh, things get bad, don't give up. Don't give up. Yeah. And the other thing, leaving. too. Yeah. The other thing, too, is I have uh, I have lupus as well. Yeah. So I've got two different autoimmune that I deal with. One yeah. with the pain, the ongoing pain. But I say it's more manageable now than where it used to be. Uh, but the other one with, with dealing with lupus. So at times I would just have a, I go through flare ups, like I'm going through like a mild one right now. And I just get like these, um, lesions in the back of my head. I actually have like one behind my ear right now, but it's always funny cause it always hides, which is really nice. So nobody <laughs> can see it. It just hurts like hell. And it just, it just, you just get really tired, fatigued out. Uh, but nobody can tell cause it's like, it's not something like, oh, you look normal. You look fine. Yeah. And then like swollen hands and the biggest thing is the, is the fatigue because it just kicks you in the freaking ass really bad. 
So, I mean, some of those some of those times when I was uh, I think I was on day 21 or 22, like I was literally crawling on the floor to make it to the pantry to make sure I got the last end of my 2000 calories. I just had nothing left in the tank. But I'm like, I have to I have to finish this. I got to go. So I mean, you're, you're amazing. Um, when we first met. So we met um, about six months ago, I guess it was, something like that, I think, at um, one of the entrepreneur meetups, I guess it was. And um, you walked up and uh, said hello. And I was in the middle of a conversation with something. You said hello. And I remember I kind of was like, like, who was that? And <coughs> there was something about, and I, I'm a big believer in energy, just something about your energy that I was like, I got to go talk to her. So I went over and talked. I was like, she's cool. I got to find out what she's all about. And uh, we started talking, we hit it off, we realized that we both had kick-ass high tops on. Yep. Uh, I had my yep. flame dot sneakers on, you had your dragons on. And, uh, Black and red. Sneaker twinning. And uh, it was pretty cool. So then um, from there, uh, we wound up, I don't know, it was that night or next night, we'll wind up in the it courtyard. Was, it was that night. Was it that night? That next, yeah, because that next night is when, when, uh, when my, uh, my friend passed away. Oh, that's right, that's right. That was crazy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and that was still all during 75 hard. I mean, y'all yeah. were drinking and doing stuff, and I was just sitting there drinking my water and having a good old time. Yeah, well, I think that, <laughs> at that point, I'd, I'd stop drinking because these guys can keep going. But uh, <laughs> so uh, we started talking, and uh, you opened up, and I'm finding out uh, that uh, the story you shared recently, uh, not many people knew about it. You shared it with me, and that's just pretty cool that uh, uh, we connected to that point where you felt comfortable to share your story. But we'll talk about that. Uh, going into this so um let's just start from the beginning um where where did you come from and where do you like, we, <laughs> you know like what i thought we were keeping this g I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so geez i mean you want to go like all the way from the, the beginning I mean, yeah, like crash course yeah so you're crash you're, you're a mom right i mean uh you got kids yeah i got i got two kiddos um and this is a funny thing because when I was sharing with you guys when we're all chilling at the courtyard, uh, my one son, he, gosh, the end of this month he's gonna be twenty six. You're not that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I can't remember who was saying. He's like, does your kid know that you were twelve when you had? Him? <laughs> I'm like, no. But, yeah, no. I love throwing people off like that. You know, yeah. I don't sound young. I don't look young, and I hell is don't act. I don't act old. Excuse me. I sound young and I act like people have no clue. Never grow no up with Toys R Us kids. Oh, I'm so bad at the stores. I'm so <laughs> bad. Like I'll I'll be touching and playing with things. Yeah, I yeah. skip and dance in the store. I don't care. My kids are just like, eh, whatever. It's my mom. That's it. They're they're pretty much used to it by now. You just see when I rock out in my car. <laughs> if you're not having fun, what's the point? I say it all the time, right? Exactly, exactly. I don't give a damn who's watching and they're in a laugh. Have fun. At least sure. I'm having fun. And my hat's not really showing up good, but that's why we rock the cowboy hat. Because if you're not having fun, what's the point? So I figured we'd try and add this to the show, but it's not really working out well. But we'll roll with that. Yeah, anyway. You just look like a either a pilgrim or an old cop. I'm going to have to lose the background for this, but we'll see. Yeah. So He's like, you're like squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. <laughs> so mom of two kids. Um, yes. Where'd you grow up? Uh, you are... The oh, I'm actually an army. Yeah, I'm an actually an army brat. So, oh, wow. okay. Yeah, I actually came back to the states when I was eight. Um, lived in Germany. I was actually born in Germany. Oh wow. Yeah, apparently I even used to speak German. Wow. Go figure. Uh, my parents, uh, excuse me, my dad had me go into German schools because I guess the American schools were not that great. Um, so I, I, from what I'm told, I used to speak fluently. I had a German nanny, but I remember having conversations with her in English. So huh. I don't know. Cool. I don't know. But yeah, then I, I came back to the States when I was eight, lived down in, um, SoCal for a while, then Northern California. And then by the time I was old enough to get the hell out of there, I got out of there quickly. Lived in Vegas for like seven years after that. And then I've been out here and. Arizona for a while now. I haven't added up. I think like 15 or so years. Wow. Okay. You've been all over. Yeah. Well traveled. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and I enjoy traveling. I mean, shoot, even when I was doing 75 hard, I what, was, was in Texas, then I was in Tennessee, then I was in, New York? in Florida. I, actually, I didn't make it to that. No? I didn't make it to New York. Make it in New York. 
No. I remember walking. Maybe it was my doppelganger. No. I don't remember walking. We walked with a bunch of people. I forget who was there. Yeah. I was doing 75 uh, courtesy workouts. The courtesy? Yeah, I was yeah. doing that yesterday yeah. with uh, with James. It says James and Brandon's in town. So that yeah. was nice to like, get to hang out with them because I haven't seen Brandon since the courtyard. Yeah, it's, uh, it's fun to uh, get, get the band back together, right? <laughs> right, right. So I can't wait till May. And then they got the, uh, the million dollar one. So, and I saw they just added another day, so I'm going to have to adjust my flight. Oh, really? I didn't see that. What is it? The Sunday? So it's supposed to be like, it's... Third and fourth, uh, I think. It's third, fourth, and fifth. Oh, and fifth now. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So it's three days. I'm like, oh, shit. Because I, I booked my air flight yeah. already. Oh, but wow. yeah, they, they added another day. It's going to be insane. Oh, that's going to be so fun. Yeah. It's going to be so fun. Yeah. It's going to be insane. There's a lot of people. If anyone out there uh, has followed our Apex journey, a uh, million dollar mastermind is coming up on June 3rd, 4th, and 5th. It's open to the public. I would suggest you get there. Um, it's going to change your life. But there's a little plug. I think ticket, tickets start on still, I think Ryan put out there March 28th. Is that what it is now? Yeah, I know. I believe I know so. I'm not right 100%. Now. I'm going by my. It's in the, uh, the minor league baseball stadium in, I don't know, I forget what town it's in. But. Uh, North Dallas, but uh, yeah, somewhere in Texas, somewhere yeah. in a big ass state. I, I forget how I don't it's realize huge. how big freaking Texas huge. is. It's its own country. I tell my buddy, I'm like, hey, I'm in town. They're like, that's three hours away. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's so far. <laughs> I know, right? I was like, I figure I'm in Texas. I'm close. That's I'm it. Like, that's it. Yeah. Somebody says there's a whole nother time zone in Texas. I don't even know that. Yeah, yeah. I was like, really? I was like, yeah. It's like so big. There's like a little part of Texas that's a, another time zone. I'm so sheltered. I never oh, this really is traveled. The, this is the other thing I bought. I like it. Yes, I like it. You are. Oops. <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> we had to keep a G. Wait. <laughs> all right. So, uh, so you've been moved all around and everything like that. At some point, uh, I guess you got married and settled down. That was um, where you yeah. are now. I guess that was how long ago was that? So that. that was, geez, we were going on our 10th, 11th anniversary. Uh, we were living out here in Arizona, and we decided to, just to go through the drive through I'm not like, I've got to <laughs> have a big fancy wedding. I'm like, screw it. Like, maybe we'll get married by Elvis. Yeah, I was so going to say, did you get to... Elvis? Yeah. No, no, I just, got, I just got a regular dude. <laughs> um, uh, we just married hunk, in the hunk truck. Of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got married in the truck, and then afterwards, you know, part of the uh, what is that called after you get married? The honeymoon. Honeymoon. We yeah. went and played poker. So uh -huh. I, I, yeah, actually, I really enjoy playing poker. I actually taught him how to play. Okay, I've never been into so. cards. Never been my thing. Oh, I yeah. love Texas Hold'em, and that's like it's more so because you're, you know, you're playing the player other than just your cards, mm. and I enjoy doing that. And then I enjoy people like just totally underestimating me because like, they see like this female. Oh, she's so tiny. Oh, we can just push her over. I'm like, mm -hmm. yep. I'm not going to change their mind. That's Let it. them go with it. I'll take every advantage I can get, damn it. <laughs> That's it. Be the underdog. Mm -hmm. When they at least uh, suspect um, it. Yeah, but now um, I'm actually going through a divorce. Uh, and that's almost like that's a funny story because that's how I had met Ryan through Thrive, not last year, but the year before. And I never knew who Ryan Stuman was. Um, he was a guest. Yeah, I didn't know who he Hatters. was until MDM, actually. But, you know, oh, wait, really? I know Thomas and Thomas talked about him, but I never really knew what he was about. I never really just plugged into that circle. So when I met him at MDM, I was like, wow, this dude's cool. <laughs> <laughs> And you've known Thomas for a long time, right? Thomas forever. We kind of sort of grew up together. He grew up next town over into cars. We, you know, he used to do stereos in my cars. And actually, the 69 Camaro that I have, the white and orange one, he did the stereo on that. So that's a what throwback. What a small world. Yeah. yeah, it's a small world. So that, that's how I wound up in Apex through Thomas. And actually, it wasn't even through Thomas. It was through Jessica. Jessica pushed me to go to MDM. I sold oh. Thomas's house when he went down there. And then he needed an attorney. I, Jess is a friend of mine. I connect. You got to talk to Jess. She's awesome. They hit it off. Next thing you know, she's in Apex. And then she's like, you're not in this. And I'm like, what's this all about? Like, and she's like, you're going to MDM. And I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going. And that was honestly the first time I had ever traveled by myself. Like, I never traveled for business. You know, you travel with the wife and, you know, stuff like that. Oh, wow. You know, on vacation. But 
I had never gotten on a plane by myself. I went to a foreign place and stayed in a hotel by myself. It was pretty You're wild, like a honestly. a foreign place? Oh, yeah. This is Texas. It's, it's foreign compared <laughs> to New York. And I wear a cowboy hat and dress like a cowboy, so go figure. Yeah, see, so you fit right in, right? You fit right in. Fit right in. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't ever realize that part. Yeah, I never traveled. Like, like, like I've kind of, I don't know, I was just always in my zone, in my sphere. Your you bubble. Know? My bubble, you know, and never really got outside. But, um, yeah, so to hear someone like you that's traveled and lived in all these different places, it's like wild. Like, I grew up in one house and I moved uh, about a half a mile away to the house I'm in now. Oh, wow. I lived yeah, in Vermont I when even I was little. For, I, I don't know, a year, two years. I'm really young, like four or five, something like that. But the cool thing with that for you is because now you've actually, you have that, like, you know people for a really long time. That's my, yeah. my real estate business, the sphere of influence. I know everybody. Like, literally, yeah. Uh, and I've always been a volunteer and getting involved. And so I'm in every organization. It's something I've always done. And uh, when I decided to sell real estate, it just, I don't know, it just came naturally to me, you know. I'm into it, too. Like, you know, it's like I'm into buying and selling and I'm into building stuff and into real estate i was flipping houses for a lot of years so did you um, play with legos as a kid played with legos and that was, that was actually said, my thing it. you know we talk about that a lot i was like i'm actually an introvert like i was totally happy playing with legos building stuff by myself like i didn't need to go out and you know see people and now here i am you know in the world <laughs> doing podcasts and live every morning and it's actually that's that's totally out of my comfort zone but you know what we talk about that's right good. like forget your excuses like this is what it's about, you know, get out of your comfort zone, push yourself to do stuff that you're not comfortable with. So, and obviously, See, I, yeah, it's, that's you. I really could have taken a job. <laughs> I could have taken a job and be like, oh, come on, come on now. You didn't play with Legos. You played with Lincoln Logs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I played Lincoln Logs, too. Because those are, those are the older ones. I think those yeah. are like before the Legos. Yeah. I had both of those. I built houses and cars and trucks and all kinds of stuff. I like did the a... Millennial Falcon. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm a big, I'm a, I'm a Star Wars nerd. Oh, okay. Like, on my car keys, I've got my house key, an office key, and my car fob with the Darth Vader on it. Oh, we got everyone saying hello. Liam Benson saying what's up. Bree Loke saying what's up. A couple people on here. Nicole's on there. What's up, everyone? Shout out. <laughs> so um, if you guys got any questions for um, Sonia, put them up here and oh. I'll try and catch them. We got off the thing so real quick. Um, so actually, I'm going. Like I was saying I was going through my. I'm going through a divorce. I asked for a divorce, uh, not last year, but the year before in December. It's just taking some time because of just yeah, paperwork the shut and, down and whatnot too. Yeah. Bureaucracy and don't do your own paperwork. Like we we separated amicably, um, but I was doing all the paperwork and I missed a step here and there and it just it fudged it all up. So I just finally found somebody and just pay them i'm like here just just tell me what to do and i'll do, just i'll do it and just i'll print it out and sign just just tell me because i'm i'm over having to deal with all this so by the 17th which is like the saint patrick's day it should uh be finally finalized i talk about it all the time right pay someone to do what they do and you do what you do i mean right we, we right try and do, do stuff that we don't know we're doing and it takes us forever and we mess it up it. and yeah just yeah pay someone I, to do what they do and you do what you do and my dad told me that years ago. You go to your Stay job your and life. you make your money and pay someone else to do their job. And usually you make more money than they do, except in a, a law firm where they make stupid money. But <laughs> um, <laughs> charging you by the minute. But um, yeah, that was a, a life lesson from dad. Stay in your lane, yeah. do, do, your, do your job and let someone do their job. Well, it's actually a funny story how I ended up finding the lady who eventually helped me out with things. I had no, I knew one of the guys from my church and he just recently went through a divorce because I watched his kid all the time. I used to be a, um, I used to volunteer in the nursery. Um, I love children. I really do. Um, I can't have them anymore. And babies are just, and small kids just love me. They just light up mm -hmm. like you, they have a baby and it just like, follows me it's crazy I, i'm like what the hell do you see um, but i was also known as the baby whisperer and i always had like i'm like give me the ones that are crying or the are the ones that are the most complicated and like they were good with me that's cool it's like a challenge <laughs> mm -hmm. so i found out he uh was going through a divorce or got divorced and i'm like dude i'm having such a hard time with my paperwork he's like oh i work with a lady that she used to do that like 20 some odd years ago and she helped me out and she's like, oh, you know, it doesn't cost anything. I'm like, I will pay her 
give me her information. Let's go. So yeah, he hooked me up with her and she's been wonderful ever since with just helping me out with all the paperwork and such like that. Yeah, it's a, it's a rough process. Uh, myself going through a separation and um, a bunch of my friends going through a separation. It seems like it's a plague. It's an epidemic. It seems like um, part of it, I think, is uh, we're all too busy and we don't pay attention to our spouses. And I think the other part of it is the distractions of Facebook and Instagram and all the other stuff that there's a lot of temptation Our, out mine there. Mine was different. Yeah. Mine was different. It had nothing to do with either of those. It was, I, I think Thomas had had talked about it um, at the at one of the events that they had. I wasn't there for it. I, I saw some of the Facebook uh, post of it, but just you outgrow the other person. Yeah. Like I went this way and he just was there, and I attempted to keep meeting him, and it just it wasn't working and. By the end of it, it just got really nasty and ugly, like to where he was yelling a lot. And that just wasn't like him. Like he had been so supportive mm. throughout like the three like medical challenges that I had gone through, you know, with the with the lupus, you know, with having to get, you know, basically my uterus taken out. And, you know, with me being in the wheelchair, like he was very supportive that whole time. And then once I started getting better and, and whatnot and. I started doing a lot of personal development afterwards because I was just like, this is awesome. Like I have energy again. I just want to go at it and go at life. And it just, it, it changed. And it's yeah. sad because I never thought we were going to be in that position. Like I was always going, doing stuff and, and, but I always made sure like, okay, we had, you know, our date afternoons or we do something or like I was going, I was supposed to go to, to meet somebody somewhere, but I'm like, hey, I'm canceling this so you and I can have time. But you and I time was him sitting on the couch watching TV. I couldn't mm. tell you like the amount of hours and hours and hours on end watching TV. And I would sit there and read a book or listen to something that was like growth stimulating. I was just like just sitting there watching TV is just, I mean, it was my thing back in the day because I couldn't do anything else, but I had a lust for life again. I'm able to do sh stuff. So I'm like, I'm not just going to sit here and wither away. Yeah, yeah. So. That's, a, that's a common theme you hear about, it, you know, especially people that started young and grew up together type thing. And, you know, one wants to, you know, go one way and successful and work. The other one doesn't want to do it. Like I said, the self-development thing. I mean, I know a lot of people look at me like three heads. Why are you going to Texas all the time? And, you know, listen, I don't know, become the best version of ourselves. Why not? Right. You know, right. it's just. You know, I, I, I think you as well as most of the most of our group literally think we can change the world, and I think we are changing the world by each message we put out there, each each vulnerable you know talk we have with someone, um, each uh, a lot of people are struggling, and and we all think we're alone on this island, and when you hear your story and you hear other people's story and you say, wow, my life's good compared to that, and, you know, what am I complaining <laughs> about? You know, like you know, I don't have lupus, I didn't go through all this stuff, I wasn't in a wheelchair. You know, what are my excuses? Like, let's go. You know, it really kind of puts it in perspective, um, which is, uh, I think, important of, you know, as, I, as we go along this journey, we inspire each other. And like I said, I really think um, it's almost a different wavelength that uh, I swear, like, we all kind of vibrate together as far as um, we're all in the same, you know, we literally complete each other's sentences a lot of times when we're together in groups. And, you know, something that's in my head, you say out loud and vice versa. And it's like, Wow, like that, I was just thinking about that, and you just said it, like and it's just it's pretty cool. So. Or like how we just like instantly just bonded, like we were just you know chilling and having some cigars, and then we just went to the courtyard. Yeah. Like I I never knew you guys before, yeah, but it was just, just, just it didn't matter. Just connect. It's it, just yeah, it's just I don't know, like minded, whatever. Like I said, the vibrational energy, whatever you want to call it, is really just an attraction to uh, everybody. And, it's just like, you know, everyone just really, you know, opens their arms up and there's no judgment and, uh, you know, it's a good way to live life. And I try and be that way. You know, um, I used to get ex upset about a lot of things, excited about a lot of things and cranky about a lot of things. And uh, my whole mindset's changed. You know, I don't react anymore. You know, I try and be intentional. I try not to be reactionary. Try. You know, try. I know. Wiley's going <laughs> to kick my butt. Hope while he's not watching, he's going to kick my butt. Uh, uh, I'm sure he'll watch the replay and yeah, he'll I'll get the something. comments. Yeah, I know. I'm yeah. going to get the try. Here. Yeah, I'm yeah. oh. around the Troy. You got your easy button? No, nope. I don't have an easy button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. There it is. We don't try. We do. We nope. do. But, um, yeah, we live intentionally. You know, we live with purpose. And, you know, we get up every day and we try and make a difference. We make a difference. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
See, now you, wait, no, you're, no. See, but that's the good part. Yeah. You're catching yourself. Catching I didn't myself. have to say shit. <laughs> I had to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but uh and that's the stuff we learn by inspiring each other because it's like you know if you're trying you're not doing it you know it's either yeah, do it's, very, it's non-committal it's not like, committal, yeah. you're just throwing just bs out there yeah it's, uh, it's a cop out i will and then some yeah but i will say this like ryan has ryan stuman has like just built a phenomenal community like yeah, it's it's the entourage. It's a perfect name for it. The, the the group that you know we go to these events and the events are great and all that stuff. But the conversations we have, you know, at, had smoking cigars in the courtyard late at night. You know, out on forty five. Uh, I mean, out on seventy five hard forty five minute walks. Um, I mean, it's literally just it's it. It's literally family of choice. You call it people that we connect with. That literally total strangers that you feel like you can pour your heart out to and that actually care and that actually follow up and. So many people reach out to me. You good? Everything okay? How are you? I mean, I love that. I mean, it's just so cool. Sometimes you feel a little depressed and all of a sudden text pops up. Hey, you good? Everything all right? You're like, yes, now I am. Thank you. And I try. Or even and, a video. Yeah, I try and do that now. I try and I do that now myself. Wiley's <laughs> well, going to kill me. I do that now myself. I reach out to people intentionally every now and then. I'll just flip through my phone and see who pops up. And be like, I haven't heard from them in a while. Let me just say hi. Because I know what it means to me when someone pops up out of the blue and says hi. Right. So. Why not, you know? Makes yeah, someone feel good no. just saying hello. So it means a lot. Because you never know what they're going through at that time. And just that little bit could, could be like so much for their day. And, you know, you like to say it's a higher power. You know, God kind of puts that feeling in your gut that I got to reach out to this person. And I've done that. And people have said, how'd you know to reach out to me? And I was like, I don't know. I just felt I needed to reach out to you. And it's, you know, it's the universe. The universe is, uh, we're all connected. We, all, oh, we yeah. all feel each other, you know, so I kind of know when all of a sudden someone says, I got to reach out to Sonia and see what she's doing. Like little Buddha. Little Buddha, there you go. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> all right, so back to you. So uh, you're going through your marriage stuff, you're getting a divorce finalized, and um, uh, that's basically uh, starting from scratch again, I guess, or... Yeah, yeah, and it was it was rough because like the first the first few months was really hard because he was just still very like angry and bitter, but now we get along great. Now we have great conversations, like like nothing. Now we're like, oh hey, can you go to the courtyard? The courtyard, <laughs> the, courtyard <laughs> the courthouse. Can you go to the courthouse and deliver the the divorce papers that they need? So because he has like Tuesdays and, and Wednesdays off, I'm working during those days. I'm like, hey, can you take that up? He's like, sure. You know, it's it's much better now. And you hear that it's a lot. Much... I mean, even myself. I mean, my relationship with with my, my wife was, you know, we were fighting cats and dogs, and got to the point now where like literally I couldn't, you know, tell you the last time we fought. It's really uh, it's just changed. I don't know. If maybe it's the pressure's off and. Uh, it kind of just becomes like you know i don't know you just become friends again which is if you would have just stayed friends in the beginning then maybe it wouldn't happen but uh, yeah but the whole thing is this is when you're fighting like that and cats and dogs and you got kids yeah they watch it and that's, that was the oh, problem when we broke it yeah. to the kids they were like we're just happy you're not fighting anymore and i was like yep. wow like yeah when i realized there was an issue because i'm just like i'll just take it in take it in take it in and my daughter and I do do walks together and we were walking one night and she says, you know, mom, I don't like hearing dad yell at you. And I was like, shit. Yeah. Like there's an issue. Yeah, um, 100%. I'm an example to inform my daughter. And if I'm allowing this, like I'm telling her it's okay for to let a man or anybody yell at you and treat you like that. And um, it hit me hard. Five daughters, and I'm watching, you know, what the example of a marriage looks like, and it's not, you know. And I'm like, mm. it's. I mean, I come from a broken home. I come from like many a broken homes. Like my my mom and my dad didn't last that long because dad ended up cheating on mom, um, and he ended up marrying the lady that he had an affair with. She ended up having an affair on him. <laughs> Um, and then when my mom met my stepdad, they got married and she had an affair on him. So I'm just like, geez, it's, it's yeah. just nuts. But then I was like, man, I really want to stay together for the kids. Cause I want to, you know, have the mom, the dad. But once it gets to that point where you're fighting like that, it's like, which is better? Yep, like, 100%. are, are you example, yelling? Are you? And yep. yeah. And then it was just finally, the final thing that broke the straw was, 
the night he was yelling at me again and she was in bed and she came out from her room and she asked her dad, I was like, can you stop yelling at mom? And then she went back to her room and it broke my heart because oh. I, I get to the, I wasn't yelling back at him. Like he just, he was just so angry and so bitter. I'm just sitting there. I'm just like, and I just let him do that. And, but when she said that it was September, it was September 10th when that happened. September 11th is when I asked him to leave. Yeah, it's tough. That's a, a tough deal. I mean, you don't realize you're fighting and the kids are in the other room and a lot of nonsense goes on. And I'm a victim of, of not being intentional. You know, we grew up together. We met when we were 14. We literally, I think, oh, wow. because we grew up together, we treated each other almost like brother and sister. Um, you know, there wasn't that level of respect and there wasn't that level of, I guess, intimacy in a way because it was just common. It was just normal. You know, it just had been that way for 30 years. 30 something wow. years, I guess. So, yeah, 31. Um, so, 31 years, like, it was like, you know, so I stopped trying. She stopped trying. It was just, you know, literally there. We talked to each other, like, you know, sarcastically, like a brother and sister would, you know, we, you know, break became each other. really good friends. Yeah, we break each other's chops. And we were really good friends and we were best friends. I actually consider her my best friend. She was into cars and stuff. We used to go to car shows all together, car nights. I mean, we were inseparable as friends. And then, um, I think none of us had ever dated anyone else, you know, in that process. So, um, you didn't even know what else was out there type thing, or even what a relationship should look like. Um, you know, her parents' relationship, you know, it's, it's all right, but you know, not the greatest. My parents' relationship through the years has been, you know, not the greatest. Um, you know, they're all good now, but like, you know, there's, there was rocky spells. So dad worked a ton he was always out you know so you know basically mom you know raised me a bunch i mean he was around but you know he worked every saturday sometimes sundays worked really late you know and um you know uh basically the way i grew up was old school was you know the the dad makes the money and you know Mom's i pay the bills and mom does everything else and yeah. you know, dad makes the money comes home and falls asleep on the couch because he got up early and worked all day and you know and do it again tomorrow and yep. um you know, so I kind of grew up in that same fashion, like, you know, basically, I make the money, leave me alone, you know, and uh, I did my part, I did my part, <laughs> you know, and uh, um. I, I provided and you do everything else. And obviously, that's not the answer. And then as more kids came along, um, you know, the kids became the focus for her. Uh, I think in a way, I kind of, I wouldn't say I was jealous of the kids, but like, you know, I didn't, wasn't getting any attention. So what do we do? We go work more, we go to networking events, and we go, you know, go keep busy, you know, it's like come home and kids crying and screaming or, you know, I changed diapers. I did all that stuff. I gave them baths. You know, I wasn't afraid of that stuff. Hey, at least you changed diapers. Yeah. My ex for the first year or so wouldn't do it. Yeah, no, he, was, he said, I'll vomit on her. I'll make more <laughs> of a mess. Yeah. I was like, oh, it, it is pretty oh, gross. Whatever. It is pretty gross, but I managed to get through it. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And then over time, you had a lot of diapers to go through. Ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of diapers. Yeah, ridiculous. But then, uh, yeah, so then um, basically over time, you know, I look back to, uh, you know, I got fat. I was 305 pounds. I was drinking a lot, you know, just because, you know, yeah, I was, I'm like 65 pounds lighter than I was. But I was even lighter. I'm up a little bit and I'm kind of pissed at that. But um, what are you going to do about it? Yeah, I know. You know, well, you, get know skinny. you take care of it. Even though I'm riding. Even though I'm riding. It doesn't matter if you ride. It doesn't matter what you put in your mouth. That's the problem. I'm a stress eater, and obviously going through oh. all this stuff is a is a is a vice. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I'm the opposite. When I stress, I don't eat. I wish that was the case. I'd be skinny. <laughs> uh, I I think I'm I might be the only. No, I think there there's a few other people that I've heard, but I actually gained weight um, doing 75 hard, hmm. which I was happy about because I'm. I mean. If anybody's seen me or knows yeah. me, I'm like, yeah, like a toothpick. So I'm tiny. So I was happy to actually put on a couple of LBs because I had been attempting to put it on for like a while because I had dropped some. Because when I when I do the infusions, um, it makes me really sick, really sick. So it's I'm just constantly. It, it's basically, I guess the 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 best way I could 
compare it to is like going through um infusions like with with cancer and stuff like that where you're just really sick and stuff like that that's what i was doing like anytime i go the, get a uh, treatment the, that's treatment for lupus or no that's just a, the treatment for the complex regional pain syndrome we gotta rewind we gotta <laughs> go back through your your, your your threefold uh diseases <laughs> go back and catch up well, with all i have two i only have too it, the other thing was a, a medical device uh yeah. i i'm not allowed to say the name but if you look up the uh, the bleeding edge and there's a lady that talks it's a trait that they talked about in the trailer it's in netflix and she talks about a device that she had in her that fragmented apart and um she ended up getting a connected tissue disease from it and i believe that's where uh my lupus stemmed from and I believe that's where the other one, the the complex regional pain syndrome stem, stemmed from. I feel like that was um, from that device. I feel like they um, they cause problems. My sister had a lot of autoimmune issues, and she had a device. And I swore it was messing up her hormones and throwing her body out of whack. And um, and then hearing you say the same thing, I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, like I think I was onto something. She was having all these autoimmune issues, and um, she still suffers. She also lost a ton of weight, which helped. Uh, but, you know, they thought she had Lyme disease. They thought all kinds of different stuff. And uh, I swear, I swear it was from that because she started having problems basically soon after she got that put in. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, yep. I, I really feel like uh, after hearing your story and I said watching my sister go through it, and I'm like, you know, there's more to this. You know, it's not, not an exact science. Yeah. Well, I know I after the fact, like I did a lot of research and come to find out like that device has nickel in it and you, that your body can end up reacting to it. And that could trigger the autoimmune, especially too if you had Epstein-Barr virus as a kid. Oh. Yeah, I did like after the fact, like I did some serious digging. I mean, before I got the device placed in, I did. I looked and I couldn't find any bad reviews. And this whole thing, too, it was something new. Mm. So when something's new, you don't hear about the bad stuff. You got to wait a little bit and then it starts coming out like, oh, there's some issues and such like that. Is there yeah, like but, all different brands or is it kind of just one? I don't really know much about them, but I know there's a few different there's a few different, a few different brands. brands. There's they're, a few different brands in different and, ways or something. Or are they all pretty much the same? Um, that's a great question. I'm not 100% sure. I just know of mine and I know of a couple other ones that are out there. I think the one that mine is uh, off the market now mm. because there are so many women that got messed up from it. Crazy. I mean, a lot, a lot of women got. Oh, yeah. Some even women died from it. Wow. Or the it broke apart and it's like somewhere in their body. Wow. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty gnarly. I like the first time when I had my first surgery, the lady told me, oh, yeah, we got it out. And I'm like, well, I want to see it. And they're like, oh, well, it, it's probably somewhere. Oh, you're going to pee it out. I'm like, I'm going to pee something out. I yeah. doubt this. Like, you you know the anatomy of the body, right? Yeah. And yeah. Like, this, that was literally our conversation. And then she, and then I'm like, two weeks later, I was in agonizing pain. I'm like, this is this thing was very painful to begin with because it was it was going out of my freaking fallopian tube and it was stabbing me. <sighs> And like beforehand, when I was going to doctors, they're like, oh, you just have gas. I'm like, no, there's something wrong. I'm like, y'all need to figure it out. Um, I really hate medicine. And... I really do. <laughs> <laughs> it's a practice. It's yeah, all it's a practice. practice. Yeah, they call it, it practice it's for a practice. reason. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the, we ended up finding it was it was coming out. But she did the first surgery and messed up. And I was in worse pain than ever. She told me like, oh, I, I've done a hundred, I've done 110%. There's nothing more I can do for you. I'm like, you need to get me an MRI right now. Cause there's something wrong. And she's like, fine, but you can't come back. I'm like, okay, thanks for your help. And then when I had the MRI done, that's when we found out the device ended up into my uterus and started intertwining in there. And that's why I was having such bad pain. That's crazy. Yeah. And then it's when I, um, I found a doctor that would help me, but the help was being barren so and he's saying that his wife has uh, autoimmune also he'd love for you to talk to her oh yeah yeah anytime have her yeah. hit me up i and there's something else i'm doing too now i i started doing it two weeks ago uh just doing a live on fridays just different like tips tricks and like hacks with autoimmune stuff that 
because I've done, I don't you see my bookshelf right here, like this top one, this, yeah. all those books up there, those are all natural stuff. Like I've done a lot of different research because when they were trying to figure out what was wrong with me, I'm like, okay, I've got all these different books of just like natural stuff and, and whatnot. And I found out about Lyme disease. I found out about all this different stuff like MS. Cause they, when you have an autoimmune disease, they just throw everything out there. Like yep. they have no idea. They're my like, sister, they were grasping at straws of what yeah. was wrong with her. Like they really tested for everything under the sun. Everything, they, yes. Yeah, and like, yes. They're just like, throwing darts at a dartboard trying to figure out what I it was. I didn't realize like you had to go to a, you had to go to a different doctor to get your blood drawn for to get all these specialty diseases to see if you got that. Then they did like some nuclear test where they put this weird dye in your body. It was so much testing. I felt like a freaking guinea pig. So then by the end of it all, oh yeah, you just have lupus. I'm like, okay. That's crazy. They're like, we can't figure anything out. You have lupus. I'm like, okay. And yeah. the whole thing is one person can have it one way and another person can have it another way. So let's say, uh, myself and, and the gentleman's wife has lupus um, just because like I, I get triggered from the sun she might not get triggered for the, from the sun hmm. so it's kind of funny in that response, way too yeah. it's not always the same Hillary's on here too when she struggles with a bunch of uh, autoimmune stuff herself you know Hillary right? you know Hillary Jastrom? yes yes, yes. Yeah. she suffers a lot I feel bad for her all the time she's, uh, she's kick ass she's like you yeah, no, that's how we, we FYE, her and I connected. FYE, yeah. both of you. <laughs> yep, her and I connected um, because of that. And I had shared, and then she had shared her stuff. And I was, that was really, really freaking awesome. Yeah. And that's the whole thing, too. It's like, like one person can be the voice, and then just for somebody else to really go out there and share it even more so. And that's why I said even in um, in my posting for the, the closer the, the closer contest like you know I could end up being like a trinity for a neo and I'm, I'm okay with that because yeah. that other person could like help out millions I mean I think bringing awareness to this like I said my sister I know struggling from it you know, we didn't really tie it to that but uh, you know, I swear as soon as she got that in she started you know trace it back when did you start feeling like this soon after she got the device and Nicole just posted that she's on her second device the first one was causing health issues for her um I mean, you hear these stories of this stuff, and you know, we talk about the, uh, hate to get into the uh, the vaccine, but, uh, you know, oh, it's safe, oh, it's safe, and I don't know, I just, I don't trust medicine, I really don't, when you hear all these stories, and just in 30, 30 years, different diseases and different stuff, you know, oh, this is safe for you, you know, it's good, you know, so it's got mercury in it, you know, it's, a, it's good for you, you know, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's, it's a practice, and it's scary. It is, and the other thing, too, is, like, we don't want to get shut down but the like this thing right here it's only been out for how long yeah yeah oh yeah whatever was in that yeah well, we thought it was safe but yeah that's no good for you either you know like I, I yeah just, now that. they're like oh just natural immunity is is better yeah. and they're they're now i saw somebody post this the other day of a sign saying um if somebody is playing sports and has been jabbed that they they're not allowed to play sports now because like there's been having too many people having like heart issues and just dying on the field. So I mean I couldn't imagine like maybe being like that kid that like oh all they wanted to do was like play that sport or whatever and they went and they got the jab and they like just to go along with everything and then now it's the other way now that if you are a jab like you can't do that sport that would suck. Yeah. That would it's scary it really is i mean i got the vaccine just because here in new york you couldn't do anything without it and I, my friend was running a clinic in the hospital and he's like i can get it you're in and out no line no nothing you know it's you know whatever it is it is but at least it's a good version of whatever it is it's not like old it's not you know it's so i was like all right you know what went in saw him got it and then i was like all right, i don't have to wear the mask anymore like oh you still have to wear the mask i'm like what the hell is the point of this thing <laughs> But anyway, I don't know, oh, like, then you need a booster, and then you need another booster. Oh, yeah. and then you need one more booster, one more booster to make it work. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I always feel weird, so I don't know if it was from uh, the, the vaccine or just life. But <laughs> I think that might have just just been you. But yeah, we, can blame, yeah, yeah, yeah. we can blame it on that. We can blame it on that. You're like, oh, it made me weird. Yeah, it made me sure. weird. Sure. Definitely. <laughs> just go with that. That's what makes you feel better. So. So basically, all this stuff kind of happened at once. So you never had any like health issues before that, 
and then you got the device put in you started with the autoimmune stuff and then the uh the chronic pain thing you have was also stemmed kind of out of that yeah so what ended up happening was like i found out i had the lupus and then i found out the device was messing with me i had the two surgeries and then finally after i had that last surgery and the other thing too that was hard was that i actually gained weight and i looked like i was partially pregnant and i had been skinny my whole life and i it was having that challenge to where it didn't matter what i ate what i did do what i didn't do like i, I like i've been a size six and I was like between a size 10 to a 12 and there was nothing I could do to change it, like nothing. And that was so hard. Like I, I was, it was terrible. And then finally when they took that device completely out is when I, it was just, everything magically just disappeared. Wow. Wow. So um, then the other incident, what ended up happening was I, I call it my senior moment. I literally fell out of the damn shower. <laughs> and I, I just say this too, by the grace of God, I didn't bust my head open because the, I, I have to take like a picture in, in the measuring tape, like how far the shower was from the vanity. Cause I think it's like maybe five foot. I'm like five, 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 six. So like literally me not hitting my head on that was a, a godsend right there. But when I woke up on the ground, like, like my toes were all the way back the other way. So I got up and snapped it back and I got up really quickly because I didn't want my daughter to freak out. <laughs> it was just her and I, and she was, she was so tiny. So I didn't want her to freak out. I'm like, all right, I'm fine. It's cool. And I didn't realize till like two weeks later, it, it no, I, I think I, I'm like, I think I broke it. And then I looked into it. I'm like, there's nothing they could do for when you break the top of your foot. They just say, you know, wrap it up and wait. And then I went and got it x-rayed two weeks later. They said, yeah, you broke it. Just here's a boot. But you snapped it back into place, though. Like it was out of. Yeah. Yeah. I just snapped it back. Because like what I broke basically. So let's like, say here, here's your toes here. Like I broke right here in my foot. So you you reset just... the bone by yourself, though. That's. Yeah. yeah. Well, I had to. My daughter was there. I didn't want her to freak out. The strength of women, I know, the man flu was out there. I mean, I mean childbirth hey, I, and all the stuff you guys go through and you just don't even stop. I, God bless. Both <laughs> of my children, I did not have an epidural. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, the first one, like, it happened so quick. Like, I literally, I did not take any pain medicines whatsoever. Uh, with my first one, I actually had a, a cyst. And I was supposed to get a surgery done during my second trimester because... When we found out I had a cyst, they were just like, it was the size of a grapefruit. Oh, wow. And I always noticed like something was bulging out of my side, but I thought I was like, oh, that's just like, you know, woman parts. I'm like, I don't know. And it was a, a cyst and they're like, yeah, it's blocking your kid coming out. So we have to take that out of you, but we'll wait till the, the second trimester because it's, you know, it's a full on surgery. I'm like, okay. And I wouldn't take any pain medicines, nothing for any of that stuff. And by that second time, we were, I was set for surgery the, the day before. My doctor's like, hey, let's just do an ultrasound real quick. And he's just like, I don't know what just happened, but God answered somebody's prayer because that thing is almost gone. Wow. It went from like this to, and I didn't feel anything. Huh. It was just, it was like there and then it was gone. So I was like, thank you. Obviously, it was pre, so. pre device. All that time pre, yeah, yeah, but women's it. women having cysts is a is a pretty common thing, unfortunately to say. That's a whole nother animal there. <laughs> but yeah, no, um, since I didn't take any pain medications when I first got into the hospital when I was having my son, I was like, just give me the lowest dose and I passed the heck out. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, um, I slept from four to ten. So from four to ten dilation. I woke wow. up, I gave like three pushes and he was out and I went back back to sleep. Wow. Yeah. That was that one. And then the second one I was like, oh yeah, I'm totally gonna do the epidural this time. I don't want to feel that. And by the time I made up my mind to do it, uh, it was too late and they just said, sorry. I'm like, no. <laughs> so yep. And we know I ain't having no more. I am this is the one I actually can't have anymore. So mm. you know, change it on that. 
Yeah, yeah, that's uh, I guess that's upsetting, right? To uh, to know that it's the end. <laughs> it was it it was tough, and uh, honestly, sometimes at times it still is a little tough. It's you know, but I'm very and I attempt to look at it too. Like I'm very fortunate. I, I do have two children. I do know what it's like to, to be able to, to give birth and everything else like that. It's just, you know, there's there's other women that have no clue. Yeah, yeah. No, you're blessed. So to, I just need to uh, suck kids it and, up. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I look at it like in that way. Just like, too, like when my friend, like when I stopped eating like gluten and like dairy and my, I remember when I stopped doing that, my last thing, uh, I had a deep dish. I love Chicago style pizza and that was my last meal with that like oh my gosh I'll say about four years ago or so so you haven't had pizza in four years I have I have had pizza but it's not like regular cauliflower pizza what you would eat (laughs) you really just look at that that ain't pizza I'm like shut up that's what I eat so (laughs) better than nothing I don't like the cauliflower one I have this other one it's but it's Gluten free, dairy free, everything free, and it tastes tastes all right. Tastes pretty, pretty good. At least I got something. So. And that's because of your autoimmune issues, or that's just a choice? Yeah. That's, that, no, that that's keeps autoimmune. Control. Yeah, I ended up doing a food food allergy test, and that's when we found out because I found out like what foods I was allergic to because that triggers you know flare ups and the inflammation. So it's like, all right, get ahead of those things and find out what foods. Um, can do that for you so you won't have that inflammation going on because that's what ends up happening for for most of us who have the autoimmune yeah, my sister is, I watch her with that too. yeah it's you know I, you know stay away off from track the on uh, eats like crap and next thing you know she's all you know joints hurt and everything hurts and mm-hmm. it's like you know um, I gotta have her talk to you honey. it sounds like uh <laughs> Sounds like uh, Benny's wife needs to talk to you too. You get the whole a whole class on autoimmune. Yeah. I, mean, I think a lot of people are suffering from it. They don't realize what they're dealing with and what's going on in their lives. Yeah, that's yeah, uh, important. Too. Another thing that's helpful with it too, like when you are going through a flare-up, is Ep- Epsom salt baths. Yeah. The Epsom salt baths are huge. Like I, I always have a large amount of Epsom salt, like in stock. And I at least do Epsom salt at least three times out of the week, minimum. And you've gone through a lot of like natural remedies. I know that's something you're big into. Mm-hmm. And you do the cold yes. plunges, right? That's is that's also for yes, that. yes. Right, so that, you got to explain that. Right. Explain the cold plunges. <laughs> uh, so how, why, and and how the hell do I intentionally get into this cold ass water? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's uh, honestly, I actually have a video on it on on my Instagram account. Uh, Sonia Ray 129. That's where I I put a lot of my reels and stuff for the cold plunge. Uh, But I literally was showing, like, if I don't take my rings off at at nighttime, um, sometimes I will wake up and I am not able to take my rings off because my hands are so swollen. So, and I, 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 like, I forgot to do it. Not, it wasn't an intentional thing. And I showed a video of, like, I, I wasn't able to pull it off. I'm here going like this. And then I got into the cold plunge and then I got out and it just, it helps with your inflammation, like a huge, mm. huge amount. The other thing too, it helps with like chronic pain. So, and that's what the, I deal with um, for my foot. I mean, it's much more manageable now. It's not like I, it's, it's, it's terrible. I mean, when I was going through it, it was like, it was, it was so bad. Like you could take a cotton ball and rub it on the bottom of my foot and I would literally bust out in tears because it was so freaking painful it was the worst thing that you could ever imagine and just imagine going through that like all the time no no breaks or anything like it was just it was yeah that's I mean that's why it it basically put you in a wheelchair right that was yeah because it took both my legs so it went, it started how long, off was, how, I, how long was this like in timeline? Like how, so you got the device how many years back and then how much longer did you realize that you were getting messed up with, you know, where they actually diagnosed the lupus and then it, developed, it evolved into this, right? I mean, this is like, that was all. Well, this was cause I, I, I fell and I broke, I broke it. And then like a, a rare amount of people can get this. You can get, you can get that, that complex regional pain syndrome from like cutting your finger. It's just like your brain just triggers and just your pa- your pra- brain, your pain receptors just go wild and they start multiplying. 
so that's what ended up happening and like my best example for people to understand a little bit more is like imagine when you hit your elbow right and you feel that 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 first pain you're like oh man that hurts and then after it dissipates and goes away well just imagine it not going away hmm. and just stays there and then what ends up happening it doesn't just stay there then it starts moving so what happened what happened for me it moved from my foot up to my calf then it went up to my thigh and then I went over to my other calf and then my other my other thigh, and it was on both of my legs. I had a TENS unit uh, for both of my legs. They wanted to implant a TENS unit in my body, and I told them to piss off. I'm like, I ain't taking no more in my body. Um, and all that? they want to do is TENS unit, what's that? Pills. A TENS unit, it's, um, oh gosh, it's one of those, oh, how do you explain one of those things? It's like you got those little pads that you put on yeah. your skin and little electrodes like stimulate your body. Okay. Like you see it uh, when when like muscle guys are, are doing their uh, their therapy stuff. The they, stim they... Stimulation stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's what you do. Is it's to it's supposed to like help um, so, trigger sure. your brain to where it's not thinking like it's there. It's there. I don't know, but hmm. it was it was interesting wearing two like units on my side and just just to get along and then after a while that that just wasn't working anymore so and i i couldn't walk anymore and how long were you basically wheelchair bound uh, at least it went on for it went on for like six months wow and it was well the whole thing it would have been it would have been longer but my ass is very um stubborn <laughs> Couldn't, and, tell. Um, <laughs> Couldn't tell. Couldn't tell. It must be the German. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying. I mean, my my dad's blonde hair, blue eyes. Like nobody realizes. They're like, no, no way. But even my daughter's blonde hair, blue eyes. And I told everybody when I was younger, I'm like, I'm gonna have a blonde hair, blue eyed girl. And they're like, no way. You're brown hair, brown eyes. I'm like, just watch. I was right. <laughs> so. But. So how? How long, because uh, we said you just did 75 hard, so how long ago was that, just to get put in perspective of? Um, from the wheelchair to net, from that, yeah. or just? Wheelchair to now, geez. roughly. Jeez. Um, I want to say, give me a second, I'm I'm bad with, like, years and dates. Especially with uh, COVID world, we lost a couple of years in the process there. Oh, that doesn't count, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I look back and I'm like, how long ago was that? Yeah. I want to say seven, almost eight years. Seven or eight years ago. Yeah, because... You, you would said in your message that at that point you didn't want to live anymore. You were basically done. And mm -hmm. I think that's... Uh, there's a lot of that going on right now. Um, I mean, a lot of people that don't want to do this anymore, don't want to do life anymore. I, uh, a friend of mine, unfortunately, uh, his niece just, just committed suicide at 23, 24 years old. And, oh, wow. Um, a young girl, bro boyfriend broke up with her and uh, she decided oh. it was too much. And uh, I just want to kind of put that message out there that there's hope. There's hope when it's bad. There's hope because oh, here yeah. you are sitting here today, the smile yeah. on your face, and you went from a wheelchair to, um, you know, again completing seventy five hard, which is no joke. And, right. Um, it's just you know, put it out there. There's hope if you're struggling right now and you're dealing with crap. Here's an example yeah. of what what it looks like to keep going. Um, yeah, because so. it, I I was literally. And the sad thing is too, like, I've never shared that with anybody and I put it out there and I actually talked with my son after I posted everything up because we don't follow each other on, on the Facebook. And I said, listen, I posted something out there and I need to tell you just in case if you happen to stumble across my video, because I don't want you to find out this way. And it was hard to tell my son. I, mm. He was there and he'd seen it all. My daughter was there too. She just remembers the clinic I went to because she remembers it as fun times because she always got to get this big ass cookie. Mm -hmm. So for her, anytime she sees the cookie, she's like, oh, mom, that's when he did the whole clinic thing. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, telling him that um, yeah. I was um, considering, considering that because I felt terrible. It wasn't just even just the pain I was going through too. I'm like, what kind of a life is that? Just like, I just, I wasn't a mom. I wasn't doing anything. I just laid there in pain and just watching them watch me 
like they couldn't help me they couldn't do anything i was like i was a useless piece of you know what i was like and i didn't know what was going to happen next because i mean it's already i mean the pain had already taken half of my body i'm in a wheelchair to get around i'm like this is just this is not a life and it it was it was really hard yeah get it i'll give you a hug (laughs) no i uh (laughs) Uh, my my shit sounds petty, you know what I mean? When I first found out my marriage was falling apart, um, I was out in my hot rod car with the speedometer pinned out near the beach, uh, basically contemplating ending it. Or the thing the thing to me was that I was like, I didn't want to wreck my car, but it literally was on my mind that night. I was uh, it was a rough night, and um, luckily I'm still here to talk about it. But it it, it almost happened that night, and um, when you work your whole life and you think this is what you purposes and it falls apart it definitely uh definitely kind of throws you for a loop but obviously oh. it's not the answer you know um it's, yeah it's uh, the easy way out yeah it's, it's, and it's, it's the, and we don't even yeah. know if it's the easy way out because yeah. who knows what's on the other freaking side yeah, it can right. be even worse if we do it that way and uh you know here we am you know that was probably about two years ago and so um a year later i found uh the apex family of choice and a bunch of people I've realized are, have had the same struggles and most of us have had a story like that and I think the high achievers um, are so used to achieving and so used to winning and so used to doing good that when your legs get knocked out from under you you're like you you just don't know where to go anymore you know and uh, I think that's a common common thing amongst our crowd amongst our group you know very high achievers very successful very uh, Stacy talks about it all the time the high uh, high sensation sensation too uh, high, mm. high feeling, you know, we're very, all of us work really hard, but we all take it really personally. And, um, I think, uh, you know, we, we're all, I think on or off too, you know, it's either like all in or all out. And, oh, yeah. um, you know, I know I'm like that. I know you're like that. And most of the people I talk to, it's, we're either full on, it's either we're all the way in or all the way out. There's no halfway. There's no, there's no medium pace. It's like, you know, on or off. And, I attempt to it sometimes. It just doesn't work very well. <laughs> I changed a lot with COVID. I mean, I, I being home and I started working in sixth grade and I worked after school. I worked weekends. I worked every summer. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically, uh, I, uh, like I said, I always worked. and I missed out on a lot of childhood. I missed out on a lot of things because I was working all the time. I always had cool toys. I always had uh, fun stuff. You know, I was always going to cool places. You know, I built a knocked the house down and built a new house at 26 years old. I mean, like, you know, nice. like did stuff that was like, go big or go home. I'm doing stuff that no one else was doing. My friends were all traveling and getting drunk and going places. I'm knocking down a house and, you know, sold all my cars and rubbing nickels together to get a house built. And, uh, but at the same time, I missed out on a lot in that process because, you know, all you did was worry about the grind and the grind and the grind and the grind. And obviously that's, you know, caused other problems There's in my life. More. It got me ahead, but it also hurt. Yeah, I said so when COVID, there's more to it than there's just more that. to life than just the grind you know so yep. when COVID happened and I'm home with the kids and I'm out riding my bike in the middle of the day and you know enjoying the sunshine I'm a sunshine junkie and uh it's uh it changed me a lot and it really gave me a whole new outlook on on life and you know I lost a bunch of weight and started caring about myself again and um at the same time you know the marriage thing came apart and uh you know it wasn't great you know to start with but then it finally came to a head and, and then I said trying to save it and trying to figure out where to go with it and finally you gotta just you know all right it is what it is and time to move on and regroup and start again type thing so and shit or get off the pot yeah that's uh that was a struggle I've had and it's uh you know it's hard to well, make that decision whole... it, it is because and a lot of it was for the kids like you said but the kids really when I told the kids like I you know this isn't working anymore and dad's not going to be around anymore, you know, as much. I mean, obviously I'm still much, around for yeah. him. Um, they said, we're just happy that you guys aren't fighting. We just want to see you guys happy. And yeah. it hurt, but it, it, I don't know. It, it, I know it was freeing in Kids a way. Kids are pretty resilient. Yeah. That's the whole yeah. thing. We don't give them enough credit for that. They're very resilient. And, and the whole thing is this too. So it's like, if you get to that point where like you're debating like, all right, well, screw it. Like either you're doing one thing or the other. Like, yeah. work on your stuff, work on it together, just say, hey, we have an issue, let's get at it, and let's give it the best go that we can, at least. Yeah. So then, if we we made this decision over here, at least we can say we did everything possible that we could. Yeah. 
And uh, yeah, we hit that point. So we we had split up, and then we tried getting back together, and it just just wasn't working. It just wasn't working. It just wasn't wasn't there. Wasn't working. So we said, all right, well, this is the road we need to go down. And yeah. uh, like I said it's it's tough. I know a lot of people are in the same situation. Um, like I said, no one talks about it, and I'm hesitant to talk about it. But we got to talk about it because yep. you know everyone's There's going. Other not going everyone's going through it, but a lot of people are going through it. And uh, again, if anyone out there in this world that's listening to us needs to talk on a side. No judgment from both of us. Yeah. We're happy to talk to you. Um, we're here for each other. We're all in this world together. And I like to always enforce that because, like I said, it's it's real real easy to get down that dark road and not want to do it anymore. And, uh, yeah. you know, there's, there's a better way. So uh, put that message out there. But uh, Yeah, I mean, because I, when I shared my message today about the, the divorce, somebody had made a comment in there saying, like, yeah, I'm, I'm at the starts of it right now. Yeah, it's... Uh, not easy so there's people out there that have gone through it and will guide you and lean on you and give you a hug and all that good stuff so uh just make sure that you're not doing it alone and yeah that message out there and it, it's it's rough however like afterwards it's it's so much better and it's not so much better just for you but for your partner as well for the other person because we both we all should be living life to to the best that we can and you know just just dropping the anchor and stuff like that is is huge yeah because like, then all of a sudden freeing. yeah it was honestly when we finally decided all right this is what's going on it was a sense of relief actually in a way it was freeing and we actually get along better now you know since then yep. so um you know but uh and a lot more opportunity can open up open it up as well yeah it's, uh, so that's the other thing well that's the thing so... I, I never would have traveled i probably if, if i was still married and all this stuff i never would have been going to dallas you know i've been to dallas like nine times in the last year <laughs> tampa another two times and it's just you know it's like i never would have done this stuff but because i was kind of in this new state of mind the new like let's go see what life is about you know try to live in my bubble and yeah break out you know so uh i think it's important you know but uh it's a good conversation to have i think because uh no one wants to talk about it and a lot of people are dealing with it and struggling with it so yeah they don't need to be doing it alone you know yeah. Slide into our DMs. We got That's you. It. We got you. We got you. We're here for you. We're here. We're here to help. You know. But wow, we're running up on They're time here. Yeah, we can talk for all night. Let's just follow up uh, before you go. I want to know about what you do. Um, so, as a fellow real estate junkie, um, mm -hmm. you are a wholesaler, right? Is that a correct? Is that... Yeah, I'm in acquisitions. Um, I do that pretty freaking well. I actually just got another contract here. Uh, before we started. Love it. Love it. So, so, yeah. How long ago was this something you've always done or is this something uh, new to oh, you? Oh, no. Uh, let's see. I've been doing this now for like the wholesale part for at least four, four, almost five years. Okay. And there's a funny story that you, why, how I even ended up into wholesaling. And before that, I was, um, I sold uh, gold and silver, precious metals. Oh, wow. Okay. Like physical metal. Okay. So, yeah, I did that over the phone. Um, but no, I started going, I got on the wholesaling side of things because, funny, sad story, however you want to look at it. Um, way back in the day, uh, my ex and I had bought a fix and flip and we put our, all of our life savings into it. I mean, the market was good. Everything was going and. He was a general contractor and he had, he had his own work and his own thing of business. He was, I, I, I didn't realize until later on that he was working for other wholesalers that was basically just doing a whole tail. So a whole tail is basically, you would lock it up under contract, put some paint on there and put some new flooring on there and yep. And then put it back on the market again. Mm -hmm. And that's what he was doing. And then we're like, oh, we could totally do this. We've seen enough show. <laughs> We've seen enough show. HGTV. Yep. Our biggest competition out in the world right now for flippers. Oh. <laughs> so I was just like, we see the show, I'm like, and you know how to do all the fix and stuff. He had, you know, the, the 15 years of, of, you know, contract and um, contractor and whatnot experience. I'm like, yeah, we'll just go for it. I got, we got this. But it was pretty cool because, I mean, I got to learn a lot with, like, how to do tiling and I suck at that stuff. I get total appreciation for people that had to do that stuff. Um, but I'm really good with cutting tile because I was actually – um, I had my daughter on my back because she had already been born. I had her on the back and I was outside cutting the tiles and stuff like that for our fix and flip. And then what ended up happening is the market tanked right before we finished. 
<laughs> Come to find out, and then that. his work started. <laughs> his his work started drying up, so he wasn't he wasn't barely working at all. No money coming in. The dude that gave him the loan on his house really screwed him over because he had a great credit score, um, but he put him into an adjustable rate. Oh, I'm yeah. like that dude was not your friend because he only did that so he can get a better back end cut. Yeah. So he put him into adjustable rate. At that same time, market crashed. The house payment started adjusting and we had finished this fix and flip and it was not selling it was on the market and just sat there and we had no money so we actually ended up in foreclosure and we ended up losing that house and we ended up moving into our fix and flip and we lived in there for seven years uh -huh. um and then that's what got me into doing wholesaling was because i felt so bad that I basically lost all of our money in this idea I had. Well, wholesale, there's, there's no risk. It's all, it's all just paper. Yeah, you know, paper, you, yeah. you lock something up on paper, you're selling the paper. That's all you do. So, you're just transacting paper. So what's your process? Basically, you're calling people up that are distressed, saying we can get your house sold for you type thing. Similar to, I guess, what I would do as a real estate agent. Right, and right. It's very similar. The house is sold, you know, we're taking a house as is or whatever like that. You get it in contract for a, a mm -hmm. low amount. Then you find a an investor type person, a flipper, and yep. you basically make your commission basically on flipping the paper to them. So, right. Um, so it's and I don't do to, the disposition. I only do acquisitions because that's actually two different jobs right there. You okay. got your dispo and you got acquisitions. So, you know, those are you got your acquisition people. I mean, most of them call them killers. I'm not a killer. I'm a freaking beast. There's a difference. <laughs> so, beast mode. Beasts, yeah, beasts will eat freaking killers for breakfast. Because <laughs> I outwork a lot of mofos. I don't care. I was those one. I was that type. They're like, oh, we want you to come and work every other Saturday. I'm like, I'm gonna work every Saturday and a Sunday. I didn't care. I just go, go, go. So. So you basically call them up. They're in distress. Yep. Say I can help call you them out. Up. And get it in contract, and then at that point, someone else disposes well, of it. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll, they'll, dis, they'll do the disposition of it, okay. they'll sell it, and then... That's very similar to just the, the regular real estate world. I mean, I, oh, yeah. I, I get a listing, and then there's, you know, I'm the, I'm the listing agent, and there's a buyer's agent. You know, sometimes I have both sides, sometimes, you know, I work either side, but um, I get a listing, and a buyer's agent comes along, and they sell it, basically. So it's similar. Yep. Similar concept. And we still do everything like, through the title company. I mean, you still title, got that so. whole part. Yeah. It's just... It's uh, just Generally, it's very generally similar. distressed cut properties. What's what's your not even of? not even always distressed too. No, it's it's just, just, it just everybody has different situations. So go. it just all depends. They're like you know I need just need to sell my house quick, and I need to know like I'm going to actually have that kind of closing date. And, and people like to have that that and that uh, just that on. yeah cash deals That'd sort be, of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're and like oh so I don't have to wait. I don't have to fix my house up. I don't have to. <laughs> oh. That's my dog. <laughs> my dog just so my dog opens the door. So that <laughs> thing great. is closed all the way, and she just opened the door. Where is she? We got to see her now. Bear, come. Come here. Hey, come. Come. Ow. Come here. Come up. 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 There we go. Oh. Huh? Black lab. Yeah. Oh. Right, go. The best. <laughs> Yeah, she's smart. As I say, she just opens up the that's door. Awesome. They're great dogs. So, all right, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So we're basically in the same line of work, just uh, yeah. a little more forward-facing, a little more behind the scenes. But um, And I've done everything yeah. virtually. That's did, the other thing, did too. Did you just close the door, too? No, I think one of my kids did. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> that is pretty impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. <laughs> that is impressive. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to. I'm not going to that one. I'm like, yeah, the dog closes the door and even flush the toilet after it goes to the bathroom that's it that's it that's training <laughs> yeah so. no kidding well no i've got them trained with like eating and stuff like that and make them go to their bed and or you see like they there they go about your man off my snaps oh that's so. cool awesome awesome so all right so we're crazy in overtime right now but um we got i think a great message across tonight and uh we got to figure out who you are and there's a lot more to uh the girl with the dragon sneakers <laughs> and the dragon tattoo. The dragon tattoo, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, um, 
I just said I just really wanted to emphasize the point of uh, you know from wheelchair to 75 hard um, don't give up because this is what life can look like if you're in a bad spot health whatever there is a light at the end of the tunnel just keep going and if you need any of our assistance and you're struggling with anything definitely reach out to yes, any of please. us both of us whatever because um, it's, uh, it's sometimes life is hard and it's easy to it's a lot better when you have someone to talk to and realize you're not alone so yeah. They've yeah. been through it. They've been through it. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's uh, don't don't go life alone. We're we're in this together. Uh, we weren't meant to be alone. I was actually listening to uh, Pastor Rick this morning. He does a podcast, and he was talking about how uh, Cola Church is uh, is the people you surround yourself with, not so much a building. And mm -hmm. um, and basically, God God built us to be surrounded by people. We're not supposed to be alone. So don't go it alone. And uh, so, with that said, let's uh, let's let everyone go to bed because we're keeping everyone up past their bedtime. <laughs> we'll, hey, they made their choice to stay along. That's this it. Long. They stayed Good on this all. long. If they're still yeah. watching, they're still watching. <laughs> um, so I appreciate your story. I appreciate you being vulnerable. I appreciate you being you, and I appreciate your friendship. Um, where can everyone find you? Uh, let's see. Facebook is Sonia Ray. Uh, Instagram is Sonia Ray One Twenty Nine. And I think that's all I got. I don't so do anything got, else. You got a press yeah. kit? Where's the, where's the press kit you sent? Oh, but that's for the articles and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, we can put a link there too. <laughs> put a link <laughs> in the comments. Oh, actually, you know what? I have my one link inside of my Instagram. It's not, it's not the press kit, but it's just the other one I've done for Sonia Ray, where it has like with the cold plunge and all the other stuff. Yeah, that's uh, all cool yeah. stuff. Uh, the cold plunge, like I said, if anyone's having autoimmune issues or whatever, I know Sonia would be happy to talk about it. You could probably do your own podcast just on that stuff. I bet you, um, yeah. you have a big following. Um, I do autoimmune, I do it on sales. Like, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Let's go, get out there. When are you writing your book? <laughs> I know. Hillary's I know. on here, Hillary's watching. <laughs> they're like come on come on there's so much so i'm like we have like all these different novels <laughs> yeah it's uh it's, it's, there's a lot to you you know I, I find the more more we meet people and you face value you just kind of look at them you don't realize how deep people go you know you don't realize the story of them and it's it's cool to, to really connect and, and find out the story behind everybody you know what just i just remember something i did write a, a small book a long time ago did you? Like, yeah it was called like the eight simple ways um for like body hacks and, and and helping with autoimmune so i talked about like grounding and 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 water so water is huge like like alkaline water and you don't need those big fancy systems like breathing doing the rebounder which is those little small tiny um trampolines okay so like those things like if you ever see before tony robbins goes on um goes in front of everybody he jumps on this trampoline he does his Yep. That's what I'm talking about as a rebounder. It helps with your lymphatic system and get those things. Uh, Tom Perry does that too. I've seen videos of him, the real estate coach Tom Perry jumps on the triple trampoline before he goes on stage. <laughs> right. So, oh, I found out too. I'm not totally competitive, but kind of am. Um, so, Tony Robbins does his cold plunges at 58 degrees. Mine's 47. Oh. I'm going down to 46. So, oh, how long do you stay in for? We didn't talk about that. Oh, um, I'm usually in for about six minutes or so and i have the water circulating when you have the water circulating in there it makes it even colder okay because i remember when i first i first attempted it i was at 45 but the water wasn't moving but oh. when it moves ooh, i was like mm. why is this so much colder and i found out because the water's moving it makes it a bit colder so yeah with the like, 75 hard phase was it two was when you get the cold showers a five minute cold nope, shower phase one phase, phase one, was one cold is shower, that, I forget. yeah and yeah. that was that was rough but honestly i kind of as crazy as it sounds enjoyed it i mean it really kind of is invigorating it feels good, it feels good. Yeah. that first yeah, minute you're like holy shit holy shit holy shit and then after about a minute or so you kind of like wow this actually kind of feels good and then when you get out you feel invigorated you feel Great. fresh yeah and, like light and just you really feel good challenge well, everyone out there get five minutes in a cold shower and see if you can handle it <laughs> right well i like it too because when you get in like you're really battling yourself with it at times like oh i just want to get out like no you're yep. gonna take it you're gonna just, just deal there, like, with it like just i don't just cramp up yeah like don't that. shiver don't, don't cramp up you yeah. just just relax and just accept it once you just yeah. accept it it makes it so Definitely much mind easier. over matter it, like, like oh yeah oh yeah Definitely. and but it's a whole thing too like with life when you fight more against it you're gonna get more fight hmm, sure. but if you just start accepting it is what it is pretty much and everything it just makes it so much easier. I mean, that's why I have the whole like amori fate. Like that's what's on my wrist. 
Nice. Yeah. You know? That's true though, right? When you learn to just mm -hmm. accept life and get in flow, as Stacy would say. We get in our flow state and we let things flow and we stop resisting and we start just making it happen and letting it happen and following those roads. I posted about mm -hmm. following the paths and following the roads. It's and all, you have about that whole fire stuff. thing. And like our fire. fire can be good or bad. And you just yeah. keep throwing that shit <clears throat> stuff on the fire. Yeah. Good or bad. Just keep, you just know. keep going. Just keep, keep going. On. All right. Awesome. Keep on keeping on. I appreciate you. Thanks for coming on. You are the You're first. Welcome. First person on the revised solo solo gig, no Sam, and uh, we managed without him. Sam, we don't need you anymore. <gasps> oh, don't tell him that. No, we love Sam because you probably will, yeah. and you're gonna like. You I love Sam. Sam's anymore. our brother from another mother that we connected over a cigar. It's not about cigars that we connect that. There, it's uh, it's, a, it's a thing. Yeah. It's yeah. a thing. We yeah, literally, I think we were separated at birth when we talk and tell stories. Like literally, we live the same life, like <laughs> like to a T. But, I don't uh, know. Some of that stuff everybody was talking about was very questionable. Well, I don't get that questionable. He's definitely more questionable than me. But <laughs> oh yeah, very much. Wow. He he ups the questionable game. But um. Yeah, that yeah. would that would be a different podcast. But everybody would have to be masked or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their voice change. Yeah, because... yeah. To protect the innocent or not innocent. Or not something. so innocent. Not yeah, so innocent. just yeah. protect. <laughs> and that's about it. <laughs> There's no innocent. Good stuff. There's none Good of us stuff. that are innocent. So, so. alrighty. All right, sounds good. Have a good night. We appreciate you, and um, we will see you out on the uh, streets of Facebook and Instagram. And Insta. <laughs> and Insta. And in Texas. All right. And it's, oh, yeah, a lot of Texas. A lot of Texas. <laughs> we'll get you All in right, New York thanks. one time. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm down. That's it. Come on out. All right. All right, good Going stuff. New York. All right, All right, everyone. Have a great night. Um, you can check these episodes back on uh, my YouTube channel, Brian Lewis Realtor on YouTube. Uh, all of our past episodes. This is episode 23, but there's 22 episodes previous on YouTube. You can go listen to them. Subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And uh, I am process. I am in the process of making this into a regular podcast where it'll be like on Apple and stuff like that. Because uh, we're having fun with it, and it's fun to uh, share our stories. So I want to share some more stories with the world. And, Fire starts fire, right? We put our head on a pillow every night knowing you made the world a better place. All right, everyone. Good night. Yeah. Night. All right, let's stop this right here. Boom.